I think if we stay in the, the current architecture, then costs will, bring, will go up. Uh, they will not be able to support all the latest functions and uh, they cannot really be uh, so successful in long term. So in long term, we need to go into the zone architecture. Once the OEM introduces here the zonal architecture and replaces the centralized architecture, then they are prepared for the next steps because none of the OEMs wants to bring in a new architecture like a Big Bang, yeah? because that's too risky for them to change everything at the same time. So the trend is that we take more and more intelligence out of the sensors. Pre processing at least is done in a zonal controller and then the reduced data is going then to the central compute. The less you waste in back and forth connection to get power and signal and trying to concentrate that into the zones where the actual devices are and the sensors are. The more efficient your architecture would be and the studies that we've done with uh, our customers have shown huge improvements in terms of mass reduction, uh, wire content reduction. The zone controller also provides power to all the elements in the zone, so they are the power supply. They replace the fuse boxes which you still have in cars with these hundreds of fuses distributed in the car. The new cars will not have these kind of replaceable fuses anymore. They will use electronic fuses in order to supply power also in the zone, but they also aggregate data from other ECUs. So these are the main tasks of the zone controller. Making something that's easier to automate on the vehicle assembly side as well as manufacturing really goes hand in hand with the overall architecture change. Because without that, you still have these long, big, sometimes thousand leads or more type of a very large harness. Well, that's really the, uh, the direction that we're trying to head to so that there's a benefit not only for us, but also benefit for the, uh, the OEM.